Why is everyone listening to GlobalTalkRadio.com? Because it's the future of talk radio. Every day, more and more people are finding Internet Radio as not just an alternative media, but as a replacement to traditional AM and FM broadcast stations. Internet Radio offers a wider variety of programs, convenient on-demand listening that meets your schedule, and fewer commercial interruptions. And GlobalTalkRadio.com is already leading the way by matching this content with a highly targeted Internet audience. GlobalTalkRadio.com offers its listeners one of the widest programming varieties on the Internet, from business and finance to self-improvement, paranormal, health, literature, romance, politics, and more. There are also opportunities for prospective hosts who would like to host their own weekly or one-time talk shows. Want to learn more? Check us out at www.globaltalkradio.com and see the future of talk radio today. You're listening to globaltalkradio.com. The following programs provided for informational purposes only. The views and opinions expressed during the show do not necessarily reflect those of the station or the host. There are no guarantees to the information presented in this material, and the claims and results of any cannot be guaranteed. As always, you should consult with a professional before making any decisions that may impact your legal, financial, and medical well-being. Welcome. Are you ready to take a journey with me into knowledge, enlightenment, and discovery? Then let's journey again together. This is your host, Rebecca Jernigan, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Good evening, and what a fabulous evening this is going to be. I have not one, but two guests tonight. One is from Nancy miller Ogren, who I lovingly and dearingly call my resident astrologer. She's going to give us an update on the whole Mars situation, as well as what we can look forward to as far as the planet movements, the Mercury retrograde. There is all kinds of information she's going to be sharing with us coming up in the next couple of segments. And my second guest for tonight is Lloyd Pye. And for those of you who have listened to Journeys with Rebecca, you will know that he is of the Star Child Project. We have some new websites to give out for him and his information, so you're definitely going to want to check into journeyswithrebecca.com when those shows are going to be announced so that you can go in and check out some of this fabulous information as it comes along. And you know, before I forget, um, I'm kind of notorious for forgetting to thank the appropriate people. And one of them is for my sponsor, Fate Magazine. Fate Magazine is a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous publication. I urge you to go to their website. That's www.fatemag.com. Please, they're still offering for a limited time a free copy of Fate Magazine so that you can try it before you buy it. So I encourage you to check them out. And I also want to give some information on some of the new things that you're going to see coming up on Journeys with Rebecca. Um, one of them is the links page. I have um, a lot of wonderful people who have contacted me here in the last few weeks. Um, and we have decided to do some link exchanges. And I really find that they're just wonderful for information. One of them is, uh, for one of our link partners, is True Ghost Stories. Dot co dot uk. Again, you will find that information on the front page of Journeys with Rebecca. Go to the link page, but check them out because it's all about true ghost stories. And I will actually be bringing you one and where I'll be reading it to you because it was pretty fun. Another one is um, the Journeys with Rebecca Yahoo group. You'll get a weekly newsletter and you can post a message and check out pictures and more. And again, you can go there to join free of charge by going to the link page and clicking on the Yahoo group banner. And then, again, I want to mention um, on my link page, the Reiki.net um, dot au dot com. Again, that's at the bottom. <laughs> that's a long web address, I know. But it's at the bottom of the web page there. You can see that. And um, they are an absolutely fabulous organization. If you go to their website, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. We have so much news to share with you, which you can always find on Journeys News and Our World News. Our World News is absolutely filled with things going on in the world today. Um, it's very it's very interesting how things really, really start popping, and when they pop, they really, really pop. Um, we talk about Kate Hudson's and her, and her psychic inheritance. We talk about um, the Mars hoax, so that you're all up to date on what's circulating the Internet. Um, also, there's some lights in Texas that draws a huge cloud. That's under Our World News. That changes, by the way, each and every week. We do update that. And then, of course, under Journey's News, um, they will talk about last week's shows, our upcoming shows, where I'm going to be at in the months to come, 
Also, don't forget that you can get a question answered uh, free of charge by emailing me. That's mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. And I do, again, want to say thank you to our sponsors, Fate Magazine, as well as to all the great people on the sharing of their links with us. Um, so I urge you to check out the links page because it is really, really a positive thing. Um, and also the Reiki in Oz. So please check that out. And getting back to tonight's guest, you know, we, we talk an awful lot about astrology. And as I myself do personal and private readings uh, by appointment, there's many times in a course of a person's reading in which I will say what I see happening happening for them in a time frame, but I urge people to also, if they have an astrologer, to please go get an astrological reading because then it can pinpoint and be more accurate with the timing and what, what's going on around the events that I see from a clairvoyant or psychic nature. Nancy Miller Ogren is absolutely the, one of the most in-tuned astrologers that I have ever come across meeting at all in this line of work. Then I would like to talk again about our second guest that will be coming up. His name is Lloyd Pye. Now, Lloyd Pye, Pye is one of the guests that has been on several times that has given us an update on what was lovingly referred to as the Star Child Project. He has several websites that will also have direct links from the page that you can go to. It's LloydPye.com or StarChild-UK.com. So please check it out. Don't go away. And we'll be back with both Nancy Miller Ogren and Lloyd Pye in just a minute. Have questions about your love life or your job? Get your private psychic reading from Rebecca. Call to schedule an appointment at 1-888-958-2768. That number again is 1-888-958-2768. More than talk, it's entertaining insight and discoveries. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. And as promised, we have another astrological update along with a wealth of information with my very favorite astrologer, Nancy miller Ogren. Nancy, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot, Rebecca. It's good to be here. Oh, my gosh. I'm telling you, you know, we, we talk an awful lot off air, and you and I just have a truly a gift of gab with each other, and this <laughs> yes, is marvelous. Yes, we do. <laughs> but, yes, you know, the first do. thing I want to mention, Nancy, is that you send out a little newsletter, a free newsletter, um, about the uh, moon influences that's free of charge by people just going to your website that's and right. signing up. And I will tell you, it has just been an extraordinarily wealth, a, a, a huge wealth of information for me. And I share it with all of my friends um, because I really truly believe that the uh, uh, the movement of the planets and the stars and all the activity out there really affects us. I mean, we we scientific fact that as the moon moves, you know, we it orbits and we orbit and yep. all of that, that it affects our um, weather, it affects our emotions. And so it's just a really an, an invaluable tool. So I urge everyone to go there. And we're going to give everyone that website information too, Nancy. But I know that you have a lot of information to share with us today. And I'm so excited. Me too. Well, we, we've got our, um, we have had our full moon in Capricorn, our second full moon in Capricorn happened on July 21st. And so um, that was two full moons this summer in Capricorn. And that gave us a real chance to review. And, and then as, as the, on the 22nd, the sun moved into Leo. Saturn moved into Leo from two and a half years in Cancer, which wasn't a happy place for, for uh, Saturn. Saturn's not real nuts about being all sensitive and, and you know, uh, there, there with that shoulder to cry on. So now he's got back his, uh, his fertility back in Leo. So we've got two and a half years of Saturn in Leo, and I think that's going to be a good thing. I think we're going to feel like more, like, instead of waiting around for mom to say we're a good person, we're going to, we're going to decide on our own that we're just fine, thank you very much, <laughs> and get on with it. So, so we've, so we've got two and a half years of Saturn in Leo, and we're going to, I really do believe that we're going to be much more sensitive to what it is we can succeed at and take the risk to go ahead and succeed at it. It's not a scary thing. It's just a willingness to believe in yourself. And I, I mean it. Leo, Leo does not lack the sense of believing in himself. No. So Saturn there is going to help us a lot. Well, and so let's let's talk a little bit about we're go, we're going to back up the the Saturn and Cancer. First yes. of all, why don't you just kind of explain to everyone, if you will, Nancy, a little bit about what what Saturn's role is, so that Saturn can... is really the. Um, the teacher in our life. It can also represent our father, and if that was a good thing, then we have a pretty good sense of our own worth. If that wasn't such a good thing, 
then we're always looking to authority figures to tell us that we have value. Now, the two years that, that Saturn just spent in cancer was about, again, we might have started looking to the women in our lives, and they may have felt to have been a little bit critical of us and maybe not as sensitive as we would have liked. Mm-hmm. So this is really a chance to say, okay, I, I listen to everybody. <laughs> you know, I listen to my friends, my best friends, may, maybe girlfriends. I've listened to my mom. I've listened to everybody else through that cancer two and a half years. You may have found yourself really trying to find that voice that says you're good enough, you're smart enough, <laughs> and gosh darn it, you can do this. So um, so I think that's what we've been through. But Saturn is a teacher and and a teacher authority who and and in Leo is not the critical parent but rather the guide. Let me tell you what I believe about you. Let me tell you how I believe in you. That's the difference with Saturn and Leo. Well, and I and I always think it's a good idea to go back and let people understand where they've been because then it makes sense on what's happened to them. Yes. And and how they have felt so that they realize that you know we're not alone in any of this. None That's of us. right. And so it'll affect us each a little bit differently, but the overall energy of that. And, you know, as you're sitting here listening, I'm, you know, rolling back the hands of time myself in my little brain and going, mm-hmm, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yep. understand. <laughs> yep, yep. And, and really, really feeling more motivated because cancer is the homebody. And you may have felt like, well, maybe I, maybe it's not time for me to take that big risk right now or, or even that little risk right now. And, and suddenly you may find yourself be really feeling like, no, I think I'm ready. I really think I'm ready. And you would be absolutely right that this is a good time to step forward. Now, we counter that with, again, on the 22nd of July, uh, Mercury went ret- retrograde. So we're also, till the 15th of August, we're, we're wrestling with that. And, um, and so now is the time to really be reviewing everything uh, that, that you're intending to get to and start. If it's a new project, just remember that, that all it is, it isn't, it isn't horrible. Things don't fall off out of the sky or off the planet or anything. It really is, though, be very careful about what you're agreeing to. You may have to go back and, and review everything that happened in, when it's Mercury retrograde. That's all it is. It's just review. It isn't tragedy. It's just review. And, you know, there's a lot of people that I speak with that, that have this phobia, for the lack of a better way of saying that, about yeah. Mercury retrograde. Yeah. And for me, it's like one of those things just don't make any major decisions that can't be undone. That's right. When Mercury is retrograde. That's one of the things that I've learned. It And, and that truly, I was born with Mercury retrograde in my chart at, mm-hmm. when I was born. It mm-hmm. doesn't affect me like that. But one of the things that I have learned is that I step back from people that, that have that phobia, if you will, about Mercury yes. retrograde. And I don't, you know, I can, it's almost like sitting back and watching the play unfold in front of you because, People just get kind of really strange with this Mercury retrograde. They do. Uh, they, around, they, especially they, I think it's gotten. A, I do. I think it's gotten a bad rap. I think it's. I think it's gotten too much power. When what it's really about is asking you, have you have you double checked, or are you sure that's the way you want to do it? And and that's all it is. That's all it really is. Is it, it just means be a little bit more conscious. Right. And don't step in with both feet. Yeah. Th- yeah. Exactly. This isn't the time to go. You know. By the bridge. <laughs> Probably isn't a good idea. Probably not. <laughs> well, now that we've talked about what has happened, yes. what's the most interesting things or the most important things or things that you believe that people need to know about that's coming up that we should all be aware of? Um, well, I think I think the idea that um, we do know also that, that Mars has, has an orbit that's coming in, in close is, is like, you know, Many thousands of miles clo- uh, farther away. It's far as far away as 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 it always is, but the closest it's ever been. So, um, in, in in thousands of years. So we've also got a Mars situation where Mars is in Taurus, where Mars isn't happy. Mars Mars moves really fast, and Taurus doesn't. <laughs> That's just how that goes. Taurus doesn't. So this Mars, you'll hear about it, you know, on TV and whatnot. Uh, about this, this is a really close. Uh, not not harmful in any way, but just the the effect. There's a little bit more of sort of a sensitivity toward action because that's the theme. But since Mars is in Taurus, as it's moving past us and and it's close to us, 
you're, re- you're really going to feel almost like, why can't I get on with things? I want to get on with things. You've got the, tor- the, the Mars vibration, but Taurus will still be saying, not, not yet, not yet. So it may be a little bit confusing as to, why do I want to, but I don't feel like I can? It's because, again, it's not quite the right time, and trust that. But the preparation or the ideation of anything in your life that you want to have happen, go ahead and do some commitment to that because Taurus is certainly a committer. You know, I'm committed to this possibility. I'm committed to this plan. I'm committed to this happening. So make your commitments and agree that you're available. And the, and then it's sort of like when it when the when the log jam breaks, you're going to really feel ready and there and on top of it. Okay, so. Um... We don't need to, like with the Mercury retrograde, we don't need to worry about jumping in with both feet. Right. With, when it's talking about making the decision. Right. It's just saying that, that it, the, if I'm hearing you right, it's like, okay, you can make the commitment, but the action's not going to follow for just that's a little right. bit less. Okay. That's right. And between the two of them, that's why I think it's important, is that for all those people who, who um, maybe agree to something and then realize that maybe they weren't quite ready, this is going to be a great time for them to go ahead and say, I'm ready because they're not going to be able to get it off the ground until it's really the right time and really the appropriate place. And so it's a, it's really a win-win. It's almost like we've got the heavens to guide us into the right place placement of our energy. Okay. So we've talked about Mars. Now, besides the astrological thing, one of the things I just want to make mention of really quickly is that it will be in the news because it will actually be visible uh, yes. in the skies, and it is truly a spectacular sight mm-hmm. because it's closest, as you have said, than it's been in thousands of years. And before we ever, obviously, we're not going to see it again in our lifetimes. No, um, no, no, at least no. not in this one. Not, not that close. Uh, yeah, right. And not that clear. And it, and that is really what's what's the spectacularness about it is. I think that sense, you know. The, the sense of, of look at how close we are. I mean, really, look at it and look at how close it is and look at, you know, it's like it's like seeing something that we don't ever get to really feel that way about and and that happens for us. And it is exciting, I think. Oh, I do too. And, and it's it's one of those things when you look up into the skies, it, it's it's just that, I don't know, it's that feeling of, yeah. wow. So, it is. <laughs> it, wow. It, it's not quite as somebody out there, but it's almost, well, look, look at how close our, that per- that neighbor is. Not that person, but that neighbor. Well, I think there's going to be a lot more of those things happening in our st- stars and skies here in in the next few yes. years. I think it's just it's just the way that it is. Yes. Um, anything else that's coming up that we need to be aware of for like August and September? Well, there is there is quite a bit of this of of this activity in Leo, and and because you know, like I said, Saturn is in there, uh, Mars is in there. Uh, Mercury is in there. Um, there's Saturn. Saturn is there, um, the, and the Sun. And so we have, we have a real. We're going to really have almost a sense of, um, and this may be even on a on a national and global level that that um, we're going to want to know what's our next step. What's our next step? What's going on? Where are we? We we may see even a little bit of of um, on the national level a little bit of impatience with possibly things not going a direction that we had hoped they would go, even as a nation. This isn't about politics, really. It's about what we, who we believe we are to the rest of the world and that, that we're going to have to re-adjust, um, possibly, uh, what, how we want to be seen. I see this as having a lot to do because Leo is very much about the children and caring, and so I think this has a lot to do with are we are we taking care of are we being sure the children of the world are being cared for? I think it's an important place uh, if that's a if that's something that is of concern to people you you'll see through Leo that there are going to be probably uh, propositions and petitions and uh, what do we want to do for the rest of the world? you know we we really we really want to be that country that we used to be who who helps and that's going to be evident too. Well, and I'll tell you, as somebody that has very close relationships with many Leos in my life, they are truly concerned with the children of the world. But, Nancy, I know you've got some more information, so let's stay tuned and we'll be right back. All right. Want to know what's on my coffee table? 
the latest issue of Fate Magazine. Hi, this is Rebecca. You know, Fate Magazine provides a -a one-of-a-kind reading experience. Published continuously since 1948, Fate is the only publication to consistently supply its loyal readership with a broad array of true accounts of the strange and unknown, from psychics and spiritualists to archaeological hotspots and fringe science, from authoritative UFO and paranormal investigations to readers' personal mystic experiences. Fate articles are factual, informative, and entertaining. Fate's unique mix serves the growing audience of people seeking both answers and entertainment. Find out more about Fate and to subscribe, log on to www.fatemag.com or call 1-800-728-2730. Close your eyes and imagine you're on an unspoiled beach somewhere, sunlight streaming through the palm leaves. A paradise like this isn't easy to come by, but it does still exist. Because the Nature Conservancy works locally with people like you to save precious places around the world forever. That way, closing your eyes will never be the only way to get there. I'm Paul Newman. Help save the last great places. Visit the Nature Conservancy at nature.org. Nature.org. Hi, this is Rebecca Jernigan, host of Journeys with Rebecca. As a truly gifted psychic and clairvoyant, let me help answer your life's questions. Schedule your personal and private reading appointment with me. Call 1-888-958-2768 or log on to www.journeyswithrebecca.com. Where will your life's journey lead you? Check out Rebecca's website for the latest Journeys news and more. Log on to www.journeyswithrebecca.com. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca, and we are having so much fun with Nancy Ogren here today. And Nancy, you, you know, we've talked a little bit about what's happened, what's coming up, but you have some more information that people need to know about what's coming up in the next, uh, well, let's say a few weeks to a month and a half or so, yes, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Well, and after we talk about all of that exciting energy in Leo, um, after the 15th of August, and and Mercury comes back direct. Um, then we go, then we, you know, on the 21st, 22nd of, of uh, August, we move into Virgo, which is an earth sign. And Virgo isn't being visited by anybody but the sun and then the new moon. Uh, so so our, our experience in Virgo is sort of coming down off of sort of the Leo high. And so I want to caution people to be very aware of the fact that it's almost going to feel like you're looking around going, oh, where'd the party go? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Why'd everybody go home? We were having so much fun. <laughs> and so, so be ready for, for like a plan B in your life. Um, as we get to the end of August and we're moving into, you know, into September, that this is when you, you really want to feel like, um, now what would I like to do? What, what kind of a project? Is this a time to take you know, an art class or, or or a class because it is September and because it is, is it time to make yourself feel like you're doing something for yourself? And I mean that. And I don't mean, I don't mean a boring class, but how about a photography class? How about something creative that uses your mind and your eye and your ability? Something like that where you really are creating for yourself um, a project which Virgo loves, <laughs> and yet it's something that makes you feel more expanded, which Virgo also wants you to feel. There, there's a real a real need in Virgo for you to feel your value, and and that's why Virgo keeps track of everything so nicely. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's something to think about, particularly as we're, we're, we're tippy-toeing through the Mercury retrograde in July. What would you like to do? What would you like to do with this fall? How would you like to see it sort of really intending it into your life what would it look like how will it feel and again because because it, it when when we get through leo we really are going to feel like well when spring <laughs> <laughs> all right for them new beginnings yeah exactly so we might as well yeah so we might as well set ourselves into a motion of of um uh, where where what do i want to do with this time and how do i want to use it and like i said no condemning if if you didn't if you get to spring and you didn't do what you thought you were going to do that's not important but think about your choices because you, I know you and I both hear people say I don't know what to do with my life and I think anything seriously do something it doesn't matter what you do one step is all you need to take just one step in any direction 
that's different and you'll feel like a whole new person. And that's what I think Virgo in the fall will will offer you. Well, and, and so let's talk about let's talk about the party atmosphere. Yeah. You know, as 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 in anything, in my opinion, you know, when you're on riding that high, that high energy, yeah, it, it, you can't stay on it. I mean, no. it, it, it's all about balance. So when the Virgo comes in, and and we kind of we kind of come back down, it's also an opportunity to carry with us that energy that we had with Leo, and just kind of give it that that smile of like, wow, that was a great party. Yes. You know, yes. and and now it's time for me to keep that, that good feeling energy right. going with me and focusing it to continue to make myself feel better. Exactly. And it and it does say, because it doesn't have to be, you know, that the kind of out in the world party anymore either. Then it gets to be really, what's, what's an adventure internally? Again, what would I like to be pursuing? Are you going to go on a cruise in the spring? That has to start being planned now. Whatever you... You know, whatever it is, are you going on a trip later? Where are you going for Christmas? Whatever. But this is the time in Virgo when you really start saying, let me think about that. Let me look forward with enthusiasm. That's what I want you to do with it. And don't don't resent the heck out of the fact, like I said, everybody picked up their, you know, their party hats and went home. <laughs> they got things to do, too. <laughs> yeah, they do. See, everybody does. And, and it just makes sense. But it's going to feel different because this is, this is going to be fun. It is going to be a fun cycle, but I really want you to be aware of what do I want to be doing because you're going to need to have that for yourself. Get a direction. Yeah. Get the thoughts yeah. going, and then when the time comes, then the decisions can be made. And I yeah. agree. I mean, yeah. I just think that's a fabulous thing. Yeah. Well, now, you know, we've talked um, an, an awful lot in generalities about how this is all going to affect people. One of the things that I'd like to take the opportunity now, Nancy, and kind of let everybody know is, you and I have got some plans made, you and I ourselves, in order to bring some different things to the audience out there. And so I'm hoping that between you and me, then they listen to Journeys with Rebecca and also get on your website. There will be um, some information as it unveils itself um, on, on some really fun things that you and I are going to be doing and yes. that the audience will be able to start participating in. So I'm really yes. excited about that. And so we, I just wanted to kind of put that out there so that people can understand that there's some really good things that's happening here um, with you and me and that will also affect them. So, yes. um, again, my website, journeyswithrebecca.com. Yours is? NancyMillerOgren.com. And on there you can send me an email. You can get to my email from my website. Send me an email and all the subject matter has to say is moon mailing. And then I put you on my moon mailing list and every two weeks you get a moon mailing about the current lunation, the new moon or full moon, and you're certainly welcome. And, of course, I'd be happy to do anyone's chart for them. I can do that by phone. I can run the chart. We can have a session. I tape it, and I send it to you. Well, you know what? That sounds fabulous, and I will tell you, Nancy, is that you have just been a tremendous help to me uh, through these past few weeks. Also, I explain to people when I'm actually giving them a reading that if they want to have some more definitive answers, I urge people to get an astrological reading because it does help pinpoint. I agree. Nancy, this has just been a delight. We're so happy to have you here, and we will be talking to you soon. All right, then. Thanks. Get your intuitive reading from Rebecca. Call now to set up your appointment for a personal and private reading at 1-888-958-2768. That's 1-888-958-2768. Did you know you could email Rebecca with a question, comment, or even a show idea? She may even answer your question on the air. Email her at mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. Talk with an extra dimension. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. As promised, we have Lloyd Pye here with an update on the Star Child Project, as well as some other information he's going to be sharing with us today. And Lloyd, I'd like to welcome you back to Journeys with Rebecca. Thank you so much for being here. Well, it's always my pleasure, and uh, just uh, glad to just add this one to the list of times we've been together. Aw, that's so great. Well, let's just get right into it. What is it that we, we've got some new things that's kind of happened since the last time you talked when we were on the air, so I'm just let you run with it. All right. Well, we've just had some uh, recent developments in the uh, testing that's been done on the Star Child Skull. For those who are not really familiar with the Star Child Skull yet, 
Uh, it is a real, true bone skull, no doubt about it, that looks very much like the skull that would go in the head of a gray. It was found about 1930 in Mexico, didn't really come to to formal light until um, about 1999, and we've been working on it since then, trying to find out what it is, not just from what we think it is, but from a scientific standpoint that would hold up in uh, to any kind of scientific scrutiny, so, which is hard to do because they have that rule of extraordinary claims make uh, require rather extraordinary evidence. So we're trying to provide the extraordinary evidence that they need. So we've been doing various kinds of testing. When we had last talked, we had done the DNA testing, which found that while the mitochondrial DNA, which descends from the mother, was recoverable, the nuclear DNA, which descends from both the mother and the father, which is a combination of both the mother and the father, was not recoverable. Even though the skull itself is 900 years old, according to carbon-14, it should have been, we, we, the geneticists feel like we should have been able to recover nuclear DNA from it, even though it's very ancient at that point, because it was a well-preserved skull buried in a, um, in a grave in a mine tunnel, so it wasn't exposed to wind or weather or anything that would have degraded it significantly. But nonetheless, even though the skull found with it, um, its nuclear DNA was easily recoverable, yet the d nuclear DNA of the store child was not. Now you have two ways to look at that, two ways to interpret that. Either for some reason it was degraded in a way that is unexpected, or the primers that are used to recover nuclear DNA from human skulls simply did not register because it's not entirely a human skull. Now that's what we think is the answer, but you know you can't prove it because you have the other possibility. So we then proceeded to try some other ways of trying to prove what it is from a biochemical standpoint. So we have undertaken some detailed tests of the of just the chemistry of the bone itself. And the first set of tests recently came in and they were in the inorganic uh, materials that had to do with the two skulls. Both skulls were tested. And in, as far as the inorganic materials go in, in both bones, they seem to have been coming from the same general area of the world. They spent time apart from each other, whoever those two people were. They weren't a mother and son, as my, was originally thought, because the new, uh, the mitochondrial DNA showed that. But whoever they were, they, they did spend a lot of time in the same general area. So we, we have a strong feeling now that, that provides strong indications that the story we were told about where it was found and how it was found is probably true. So now the organic uh, material in both bones is being tested. And when we have those results toward the latter part of the year, we hopefully will know more about how the two of them stack up from an organic standpoint. Um, and if there's, of course, or significant organic differences, it would be it would be interesting. And if it turns out that the star child bone were to have materials in it that are just not found in human beings, for example, or are found are, are there, but in percentages that are not normal, then we'd have some interesting data to look at. It, it doesn't. Uh, work around the fact that we need nuclear DNA, but it would help us to argue that nuclear DNA needs to be recovered from this skull, and that's an expensive process if the primers that we're using now are human primers and are not recovering, then there is a way of creating primers. You build them block by block, basically, the same way that the human primers were built. You build another rack of them according to what what gets picked up. It's it's kind of complicated, and there's no there won't be a test on this. Nobody needs to understand it, but it, it can be done that you would build the primers that would suit the star child's nuclear DNA, whatever it is. And if those primers were significantly different than the human primers, well, then we would know absolutely that this thing is is not entirely human. It would, in other words, if you could create primers that would indeed recover nuclear DNA from the star child bone, and those primers work, and the human primers don't, then that tells you it's not it's not human bone, not entirely human bone. So we're pretty excited about the prospects, but however, there and that that recovery, I mean, excuse me, that building of a primer that costs in the range of a quarter million dollars to do that. So we we you know obviously don't have that kind of money. So what we're doing now is I'm writing a book about the whole six year process that we've had, in the hope that we'll have some interesting results from the 
from the organic testing and that maybe by putting a book out and bringing it, bringing it to the attention of a much wider audience than has ever seen the information before, we'll be able to perhaps get the money that's required to do the primers, to create the primers that would really prove it to a scientific standard that really nobody could argue with. Exactly. So for those for those who would be interested in, in seeing where we are and what we've done from a testing standpoint, there's a website that you can go to www.starchild-uk, not underline, starchild-uk.com. And if you go there, you can read the tests if you want to, the reports from some of the people that have done the testing on it. But the main thing is there are two slideshows there, two PowerPoint slideshows. You don't really need PowerPoint. You can just download them. And you, as you go through the slides... Well, hang on there. And let's, let's, we're going to come back, Lloyd, and talk about the slideshow. Don't go away because there's much more. Just a minute. Email Rebecca with your comments to mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. We're here with Lloyd Pye of the Star Child Project, and you left off with um, the website, which is www.starchild-uk.com, which, by the way, I just want to make mention that people can, it'll be a, an active link on the website, Lloyd, so people can go directly there from my website to get to it. Um, but you were talking about the uh, PowerPoint presentation, and we didn't need to have PowerPoint in order to pull it up, and you were in the midst of talking about that. Right. You, it, it's just, it was created as a PowerPoint, as most people know how that works, but you uh, do not need PowerPoint in order to pull it up. It's it's fairly easy to do both so- slideshows. Now, you, what you have is one slideshow covers the sort of background information, the background slides about the star child, and then one is the 2004 results. These are the technical results. So in the first slideshow, you'll see a lot of pictures that are, you know, of the skull, of course, in comparison with the human skull, and drawings of what people imagined it might have looked like in life, and uh, it, just a, a wide-ranging kind of look at it from an overall viewpoint. And each picture has a few lines of text underneath it to explain what you're looking at. So I mean, you won't be you won't be confused by it, what you're seeing. Now in the second slideshow again, which is the 2004 results. What you'll see there is mostly slides. You'll see again some some comparison shots of the two skulls together, but mostly you'll see slides that were taken by microscopes looking at the bone under high magnification. And what the first the first group are under a scanning electron microscope, and the second group the, those would be black and white, and then the color ones are under a standard binocular microscope. And this produced some really amazing results. I mean, amazing results. We found some kind of fibers in the bone of the star child that do not exist in normal human bone. And because the star child bone is highly unusual in that it is lighter than normal, it was half as thick as normal, it weighs half as much, but it's sturdier, it's more durable for some reason, we think maybe those fibers have something to do with it. Furthermore, there's some reddish residue in the cancellous holes of the bone, which as you read through the slideshow, you'll see is also not found in human bones. So we don't really know what these two, these are two really great anomalies relative to human bone, and, and we need to do more research on what they are. But because they're unknown in human bone, there are no scientific protocols for dealing with them. In other words, there's no tools, there's no tests, there's no nothing for recovering those things and, and testing them. So that's something else that would probably cost a, a lot of money to develop the technology to do it, but it definitely needs to be done. So if you will, any anybody listening will take the time to read through those uh, slideshows, particularly the, the second one, uh, you'll be more than satisfied that we've had really astounding results in the work that's been done in the past year while I was in London. And now I'm, I'm back in the States to write a book about this to try to, again, get more of an audience <clears throat> to understand what we have here and what we're trying to develop and the possibilities, the distinct possibilities we have for for doing some really astounding, uh, getting some astounding results. Now, uh, to, to shift for a minute to something else, other that's, that pretty much is the, the nutshell for the star child. But I'd like to mention, just for those who might be interested in a wider look at what's what might be going on in in the world and in 
human history. You know, on my personal website, I, the, my work with the star child is one part of what I do, but I, before that, I was a researcher into human origins and hominoids and, and things like that. So what I have on my personal website, which is www.loydpie.com, L-L-O-Y-D, P-Y-E, P is in Bawai, Lloyd Pie, um, dot com. What you'll find there is a series of 15 of these slideshows, again, that are very easy to download. Now, the Star Child ones are about 40 slides each, so they, both of those are fairly long. But the ones on my personal website are relatively short, I average about 10 slides each. And each of these deals with a question relative to the intervention theory of human origins. Now, what I am is one of the one of the main proponents of the intervention theory. You have Darwinism, and everybody knows what Darwinian evolution is about, and what the you know the Darwinists say. You have creationism, and everybody knows how what they say about how things came to be. And of course, intelligent design is an aspect of creationism. The interventionists stand apart from both of those groups. We try to explore the the middle ground. What we say is that, it, that there's clear that there was intervention, but we don't put it at the cosmic, um, you know, the supernatural, godlike level. We think it was nuts and bolts, ordinary people, not, you know, ordinary beings anyway, who just had a heck of a lot better technology and, and perhaps brain power than we do. But somebody has interfered here on Earth and put everything here that we see as it is, and that's what's in, that's what intervention is about. That's what I believe, and that's what I show on my website via the the slideshows. What a thumbnail of the evidence is. There's there's a lot of it, but this is encapsulating it as tightly as I can, so that those who are interested in learning more about it can see for themselves very easily. Again, looking at pictures that have a few lines of text under each picture to explain it at a at a very fundamental level. I don't think even um, you know, an eighth grader would have trouble going through it. So it's it's something that I've uh, created so that people will have a better understanding and easy access to what the intervention theory and what what I do is about. And then if you want to explore more, you know, you of course can get my book. Everything you know is wrong. You can get the books of other people who work, you know, this work in this field, and just educate yourselves. Well, and Lloyd, I, I have to tell you that. Um I haven't had an opportunity to look thoroughly through each site. I've been through both sites. It's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And I, I would invite you back when when the book is out so that we can tell everybody that the book is out and also any new discoveries. Um, again, everyone can get that information, loypie.com or starchild.uk.com. No, starchild-uk. Dash, UK. I'm sorry. I said right. dot, didn't I? <laughs> right. And it, it will be on the website. And I urge anybody who's fascinated by this as I am to please go and discover it for yourself. Lloyd, thank you as always. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you, Rebecca. It, it is. It's always a pleasure. I'd like to thank my guests tonight for sharing their wonderful information and knowledge with us. And a special thanks goes out to you, the listeners. Now, you know, the guests I have on air are given the opportunity to share their viewpoints or ideas. Now, you and I have the opportunity of choice in regards to those ideas or viewpoints. Be sure to check in next week for more enlightening educational talk and discoveries. This is Rebecca of Journeys with Rebecca. Until we meet again, where will your life's journey take you? Many blessings and good night. <laughs>